Expo. Miku Expo. Big yikes energy, am I right? And honestly, it's not even for the reason everybody's talking about. At least in my opinion, as somebody who's been to Magical Mirai seven years in a row. It's not actually about the LED screen. Of course, we could talk about the elephant in the room first. The LED screen is merely an example of the poor stage presence that Miku Expo 2024 has. The LED screen means that most of the stuff that they've ever done, barring, I guess, Miku Fest that they had recently? I, I might be remembering the name wrong. But the 16th anniversary Miku performance used an LED screen as well. And while I didn't see any complaints, uh, through a quick browse of Japanese Twitter. I wouldn't be surprised if there were some, but I mean, Hololive has fantastic LED screen performances because they make use of what the LED screen is good at. But Miku Expo 2024 does none of that. Absolutely none of that. The LED screen just becomes more ob obvious the longer the stage goes on. Well, the longer the performance goes on, the more you notice the LED. Because the whole, like, setup of the stage practically brings attention to the fact that there's a giant square rectangle in the middle of the stage. And, I mean, don't get me wrong, like, everybody knows about the glass panel. I mean, it's, it's not like we weren't always staring at a screen. The only difference this year is instead of this, we got this. <laughs> We've always been watching a TV screen. It's just a different form of a TV screen. But previously, you could blend that border. While you could still notice it, by it being glass, it meant that light went through it. So they would have fantastic, detailed, and, you know, really cool looking light shows to go with each song. And to top it all off, they would often include extra screens, like Magical Mirai often has an upper bar of, like, at the top of the, the stage presence. And I think they've also pulled in a couple of other screens and what have you. Besides that one, there's usually at least two screens, I think, for Magical Mirai, if not more. And the other screen is almost certainly just an LED. Uh, it's definitely not the, the glass panel. And I'm pretty sure Miku's moved to that other screen uh, for a couple of songs, very rarely. For, you know, more stage presence, more showmanship. And that's what Miku Expo is lacking this year. The stage setup is cheap. It looks cheap. It's a set of, like, LED line strings and in a weird grid formation with the logo and probably... The worst part about it all is the rant, don't, semi-random, Japanese words slapped across it. And they don't even like change for these songs. Oh no, no. It's the same like four words, five words. I can make out from where I was, Sozo creation. And I think the other one was also pronounced Sozo imagination. Yeah, like, and there were... There was at least one more, but it was hard to make out. And I think one other that to my at my distance was literally just squares. And I haven't seen clear enough shots um, to sit there and actually figure out what they're supposed to look at. Look to be, I'm, my eyes are bad and I was out, not in floor seats. <laughs> but like, they just slapped random Japanese words on there. Uh, wow, that's... Um, not a good look. And honestly, they're lucky that, like, I don't know how many people in the audience could actually read them. <laughs> like, if they change for each song, being like a so word related to the lyrics or something, sure, cool, fine. But no, like, <laughs> they're generic Japanese words relating to the concept of Miku. Like, um, that's yikes. And then there's the fact that, yeah, the only thing that changes is the color of the stage lighting. There's no, you know, unique things for each song. Like, you could pretty much take away everything around Miku, and there's really no difference between one song and another. And I don't mean that the show was bad. I thoroughly enjoyed myself. They played a lot of songs I really enjoyed. 
and I had a good time, generally. But there are a lot, a lot, a lot of negatives that were going on with this event. And while the concert itself was enjoyable, uh, it was a weaker performance than all seven Magical Meat Eyes that I've ever been to, even including, yes, I went to 2020 and 2021 and 2022 when chanting was not allowed. Even without chanting, Miku Expo was a worse performance. And I already know, I already expect North America to do nowhere near the cheering that Japan can do. I know that. But even 2020 was a better show than this. And I had to go through two lottery systems and somehow I still won both. <laughs> but that aside, that aside. I mean, yeah, like, and I paid more for this. I paid more for a standard seat than I do even when the yen conversion is favorable for them. I've only ever gotten S seats, but yeah, the the price is what I expect for a Western concert. And I also can put in some, you know, understanding with it being an international tour and stuff like that. But I... <laughs> I'd rather spend all the extra money to go back to Magical Meat Eye in the future. I'm really hesitant to go back to Miko Expo because as, as nice it is it, as it is for it to be local, the stage presence wasn't good and it didn't even have anything to do, to me, with the LED screen. It's about the same size. Other thing Mimi here, I just wanna like say, uh, my perception of space uh, is not the strongest. So I'm aware that it's probably like notably smaller, but at least to me, admittedly from the distance that I was at, it didn't feel that much smaller, if that makes any sense. Um, I just think that like the size is like the least of its worries. I think that the LED screen and the size of it is like the least of the screen's problems. I think it has a lot more going on with the stage. Um, anyway, back to past Mimi. They could easily do something really nice with the LED screen. They already used some in Magical Meat Eye, from what I could assume. But, like, you slapping random Japanese words? No special, like, differences with each song? For crying out loud, there were no secondary screens for people in the back. That's something they've had in previous years. I have no idea. Absolutely no freaking clue why they didn't have secondary screens. Is it a problem with the venue? Do the ven did, did, did the venues not have them? I can't honestly believe that they didn't have those. Those are always there for Magical Mirai. And they were previously there for previous Miku Expo years to give those in further back seats a better view. I mean, and gosh forbid if you were in the floor flooring area and you're someone like me who's extremely short, you ain't gonna see, you paid all that money to get a floor seat and you aren't even gonna see Miku because some six foot tall giant's gonna be in front of you. This is why I don't get floor seats in Western concerts. And why honestly, I don't even know if I wanna go to Magical Meat Eye in the future from the foreign lotteries because I get stuck behind really tall people. At least when I got lived in, I lived in Japan previously, so I was able to enter the Japanese side of the lotteries. So I never really had an issue with people being too tall because I'm about uh, average Asian girl height. I'm not Asian, but I'm in their height range. So, but even then, like I would also still have the upper screens to look at if gosh forbid the guy's head in front of me but if someone's super tall sometimes i couldn't even see those from the floor seats it's i i feel really bad for anybody that went to a venue where the floor seats stood and if they were short i think it's i think it's great that at least in my um uh, Miku Expo that I went to, which is the New Jersey showing. I think most people were seated, so that's good for people like me who are short. <laughs> um, but yeah, the LED screen, like, it's not good, but it's more of an example of the problem. Because Miku Expo has a lot more going wrong than just that screen. I don't know if anybody else has been noticing, but pretty Bruh. much before every venue, besides like, I don't know, one or two of them, they've posted a thing saying, oh, we can't have the uh, the merch booth where we said we were gonna put it. 
Uh, it's gonna be over here now. They've been doing this like before almost every single venue. How can you be so disorganized that you can't even do that? You can't even like know where you're gonna put the merch until like a week before. Like, <gasps> yikes. And that's, and like, and looking at the merch line from the Newark show, the New Jersey one, oh my goodness gracious, they have two booths, but they might as well have just been one because that Vocalo Ouroboros, whoever said that on Twitter, I love you, that's awesome. Um, but the Vocalo Ouroboros of a merch line, I don't know where it ended. It never ended. It just circled the entire thing. And gosh forbid you actually wanted to buy a merch, you weren't seeing the concert. You were not seeing the concert. And honestly, I remember I also went to talk to one of the staff, the the uh, Prudential Center staff. I could tell because they had the, the Poland Spring shirt, so they weren't part of the Miku Expo staff. I asked this, this very kind guy um, standing by the merch area, and I just wanted to know politely, you know, hey, do you know what's going on with the merch situation? And I felt so bad for him because he was so exasperated with his, no, they don't even know. And I'm like, oh, I see, I understand. <laughs> Good luck. Like, he had every right to be exasperated. He's probably been asked multiple times by multiple people, and he's frustrated with them. And I can't imagine that it was any better at any other venue. And you want to know what? I've been to Miku Magical Mirai, right? I've been to Magical Mirai. Magical Mirai is a freaking amazingly organized and orchestrated setup. They have... I do still think it's very funny that Magical Mirai actually has sort of an exposition, whereas Miku Expo, with Expo in its name, uh, pretty much never does. But besides that humor, Miku and Magical Mirai, rather, <laughs> sorry, I keep mixing up my names, but Magical Mirai has a giant, like, the whole length of the exposition hall is, or near, or at least, like, half, is just the official merch booth. They have them all set up and at the top, like, you know, in artist alleys where they, where artists will have like the big, you know, uh, grid thing where they put their, uh, prints up above. So you have like a vertical space. They have a giant banner at the top with all of the merch running across. It repeats like once, maybe twice across it. And when things sell out, they take this long stick and apply a sticker that says sold out on it. And eventually, there's also at the end of the line, which is clearly marked at the end of a bunch of like roped off line areas, someone will eventually get to the sign that's at the end of the physical line and put a sticker out there too. They even have a, a display of all of the merch, including the randoms even. They have a display of all of the merch on a nice table, nicely laid out for you to look at. They even have a rack of the different sizes so you can hold it up to yourself to see if it's gonna be the right size of a shirt for you. And like everybody knows, everybody in the hall, someone halfway across the hall could see how much they have sold out. You know, like it's so well organized and that was not what we saw. I, and what I've heard about any of these and honestly, Miku Expo's merch situation has always been absolute garbage. It, the first year was literal mob rushing. There was no lines. Everybody was like swarming that table. I don't even think the second one uh, was any different. Like, it was bad. And it's how, oh, and one more thing that Magical Mirai does that I honestly think they really should have done. Magical Mirai, and I think this is standard with a lot of events like this, they have a printed out order sheet. And they give you one of those crappy little pencils and you take an order sheet, especially if the line is full, especially if the line is super full. You give, you're give, you given a little pencil and an order sheet and you write in how many you want. And when you get to the front, you give them your order sheet and the crappy little pencil. They confirm every item that you wrote down and they say, okay. And they, then them, maybe one other person goes to specific boxes and grabs all of the stuff. They then confirm it with you that yes, this is everything you wanted. We didn't forget anything. They then confirm the price and you pay and then you carry everything in your arms and go off to the side and organize yourself there i don't even like they don't even have to make it color i don't want i don't even care if it's not color it could be black and freaking white it it doesn't even i don't even know i don't even care if it doesn't have pictures an order sheet like that would have massively helped them and they should know this because 
at least some of the staff should have been to Magical Mirai, either as staff or as an actual, like, customer. <laughs> like, they should know. They should know that, like, that'll work. You can try to tell me, well, Westerners, you know, Americans, they, they're, ye howdy Americans won't understand it. No, they will listen if you give them the option. At least I think they would. I mean, it's not just, no, it's not, it's not the level of when in Rome that, you know, you would do if you actually go to Magical Mirai because you're going to follow everybody else. But I think if they put a precedent and started doing that, people would be welcome to it. And they'll see how smoothly things are. They'll see how great and like smooth, quick, orderly this can be. Rather than a chaotic mosh with a line that never freaking ends. They would absolutely see how good it is. And I think people would be welcome to the idea in the future. They're like, wow, that made this super, super nice. Like... Wow, I hope they do this again. Or they won't even think about it and you do it again next year and like, yeah, this is great. I went in, out, got my stuff and I'm all done and it's been like five minutes. Not even at, at the front of the counter. And that's, and, and of course, never we never even discussed, I haven't even discussed the online pre-orders. I don't know what they're doing. And I'm not, I can't necessarily speak to the details behind Magical Mirai, but Magical Mirai, I don't think anything has ever sold out on Magical Mirai pre-orders. Because they actually, from my under, well, what I would guess, they use the pre-orders to determine how many they should make. And don't get me wrong, they may be using um, Japan-based manufacturers to make some of these items because they know how to make these items. So there may be a bit more issue there with, you know, unlimited quote-unquote stock and ordering based on that so maybe they do need to have like a, a super cap of how many they can order but there definitely should be some level of okay we're gonna judge how many we order based on how many are ordered we'll put like an extreme cap like an actual extreme cap just in case but, you know, and also, I know that some people bought more than two. That is unacceptable. They should not have been able to buy more than two pen lights per IP. I don't care if your family's going with you. Per IP, period, end of story. I, I don't even care. Figure out, like, <laughs> if you're not going if you're going to be more limited in the stock because you can't add to the order, like you can't order super more or a lot more because of the situation of it being an international thing, you need to put a serious limit, a hard limit on or online orders. I mean, people absolutely, I, I actually don't remember whether or not on online orders are subject to the same limitations um, as in person. But if they are, then, you know, with Magical Meat, I, I wouldn't be surprised that they are. It's just, I only ever ordered one, so I don't remember offhand. But the fact is, yeah, there should have been limits. And I'm absolutely certain that some people bought more. And there are absolutely, there's absolutely no doubt in my mind that there are people that bought them to scalp. And while that, while putting a limit wouldn't necessarily scop, st stop, <laughs> wouldn't necessarily stop people from scalping, it would at least mean that they can only scalp so many. And, you know, yeah, if, what is it? There's no, if there is a limit and also that they are able to order more based on how many pre-orders they get, then it's going to be a lot harder for people to even sell them after the fact, right? I'm pretty sure, if I had to guess, I think the restock that happened with the pen lights on the online site was literally them just taking stock from what was going to go to the venues to sell on the day of. I don't think they technically ordered more, which isn't good. But that's my assumption, and I might be wrong on that, so I'll at least take that. Another editing Mimi moment here. I just want to, like, also add in the fact that Magical Mirai has so many sponsors in comparison to Miku Expo that, like, if you look at the page for Magical Mirai, they can't put logos 
there there are so many um sponsors that they have to be in text only and i mean if you go to magical mirai chances are you probably got the ticket with the exposition ticket because the exposition ticket is like 500 yen it's extremely cheap i mean it's in part because there are so many sponsors and on that exposition hall <sighs> like like a good quarter of the floor space is just sponsor merch booths like yeah most of what's ex what you expect to do in that exposition hall is not just like look at the cool like exposition stuff like yeah there's a nice like display about like the history of miku history of miku's concerts history of yada 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 you know like the big miku statue which apparently only started the year i went <laughs> the year i started going so that's pretty cool um all these like big displays i mean sometimes there's even a miku car <laughs> that at least in pre in some years you were allowed to sit in but you know chances are yeah you can look around a bit but you're almost certainly going to pick up something either from Good Smile or from Gift or from that one glasses company. I think, I forget which company it is. No, not. I don't remember. But like, you're gonna pick up something from them that's exclusive to the event hall. Like, they have a lot of exclusive merch. You're probably gonna pull on the gotcha. Or if you're not buying anything from like the big companies, you'll go to the Guarantee Creator space and you'll pick up something from, well, the producers of the music themselves. I usually picked up something from Wonderful Opportunity every year uh, if they didn't sell out before I got there. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Now that official merch is usually available for pre-order, well, like ordering online so that it would arrive in time for your concert, like now that that's, you know, a thing, um, you probably don't even like go in there for the official merch. You're going there to like, take in the atmosphere and go to the other booths, the sponsor booths. It's probably so much easier for them to get sponsors because the sponsors get a booth and get more money. I mean, for crying out loud, Miku, the Tokyo concert is sponsored by the freaking city of Chiba. She is sponsored by the city. I know it's because of tourism, but like, that's the level of sponsors that she has at Magical Mirai, it is day and night comparing their sponsors to each other. There's a reason why Magical Mirai is probably the prices that they are besides what's expected in Japan and the US. Like, the US, Miku Expo was just a concert and they have very minimal sponsors. They, you know, people also expect it to be like $80, $90, which is another matter entirely. Yeah, I paid less for my Magical Mirai ticket, but I was also like almost expected as part of the event to go to the sponsor booths and, you know, pay them more money for being there. <laughs> and don't get me wrong, I am, I love my absolute collection of gift Mikus. Um, I love them and, like, I'm so glad that I have them. <laughs> and I have a massive collection of the, um, the gacha can badges and everything. But, I, I know what I expect. I know that I'm going there to spend money. <laughs> I used to specifically budget myself for that event. It, it was important. The other thing about Magical Mirai is that in contrast to Miku Expo, there are, like, four five, six concerts per location. It's a whole weekend event. Um, you know, you have multiple chances to go to this event. And the only difference between each day is like one or two songs. And I mean, that's across all of them. Um, there's only like one or two songs that they changed in the set list. Um, yeah, like you previously often had the choice between Osaka and Tokyo. Um, and then recently it looks like every once in a while they seem to add a third location. So now there's even more chances to go to this concert. Versus, I mean, don't get me wrong, like, it's not like it's easy to... I don't want to say it's difficult, it's easier to go from Tokyo down to like Fukuoka for the concert. But it's not necessarily like, 
you know, cheap. It's cheap in comparison to like me traveling to California to go see Miko. I won't deny that. But the thing is that like, yeah, they have a lot more concerts. They have a giant exposition hall. Their, their sponsors, their sponsor list is insanely long. They're able to host a much, they have a much bigger backing for Magical Mirai that like, while it's not an excuse, I can at least understand certain things uh, struggling more in Miku Expo's side. I would say that if Miku Expo this year was like its first year, maybe there would have been less people shouting about the LED screen. Maybe. Maybe. But this is your th this is their third time coming physically overseas. They're, it's a disappointment. <laughs> And, uh, let me, let me back to past Mimi. So, yeah, Miku Expo 2024 is a culmination of a lot of things that have been wrong with Miku Expo for a lot of, a long time. It has always been a shit show with the merch. The presentation has at least been good in the past, but this year, it, it took a nosedive. And finding out that it was possibly due to the fact that the staff involved was part of the symphony, which of course, they need to use an LED screen there. Like, the staff, the, the, the performers need to see their sheet, their sheet music. <laughs> which is very different. Um, but the fact is, like, Miku Expo 2024 is a disgrace. It is prob- it is absolutely, without a doubt, the worst Miku performance I have ever been to. And yeah, I've been to Magical Mirai seven years in a row. I've been to Miku Expo each time it's come to the West Coast. Uh, East Coast! I'm East Coast. Each time it's been in the New York, New Jersey area. I've been to each one of them. And while I enjoyed the concert, because of course it was fun, I enjoyed the music, I enjoyed the band performances, though I kind of wish they bumped up the bass. I love it when it shakes my soul. Uh <laughs> And I actually, I, as interesting as it was to see them using local perform performers, I think that's great. That's actually really cool. I mean, yeah, I'm a little sad to see not the usual gang, but like, that's not a problem to me. That's really cool to bring in local performers. I'm, I think that's really cool. Well, maybe local as in like United States. I don't know if they had like local local or like they have the same group, the whole tour from the United States, whatever group it is, that's awesome for them. I'm sure, I'm sure that at least for some of them or maybe their families, this was super cool and super awesome and I'm happy for them. And while, yeah, like, I just wish they turned the bass up a bit higher because I really like it when it just shakes my whole being. I mean, their performances are great. But unfortunately, everything else on this stage was a letdown. And the merch situation is probably... I think I would say... Do I want to put it lower than the previous year? I think it's more disappointing than previous years because it looks like it should have worked. It looks, it was so close to like being good, but like they, they dropped it, they dropped the ball and it exploded on the floor. Like, <laughs> like at least with the first two years, they were like a standard shit show. This was like, they had something, they had an idea, they, they had parts of what could have made this good and yet they still screwed it up i think that really is what makes it worse the yeah yeah so will i go to miku expo i guess 2026 i don't know i legitimately don't know and i'm not even gonna necessarily say oh this is crunchyroll's fault if i see crunchyroll then i'm not gonna go because I don't want to pin the blame on a singular entity. Not necessarily. But, I'm definitely going to be hesitant, and I think they're going to see it as well. People are going to be hesitant to go to future Miko Expos. I wouldn't also be surprised if their Europe tour sees a lot lower of a turnout than they were expecting it to. Because they announced it after we already knew about the screen. And there are going to be people that choose not to go and choose not to purchase because of the screen. Well, I don't think, again, I think the screen can still make a fantastic performance. 
they just failed. And I think that's the saddest part about it all. The Miku team, the people generally behind Miku, so I would say probably like Sega and whatever team is behind Magical Mirai and whoever else is involved specifically in this thing. Like, Miku has been doing concerts for years. Magical Mirai just celebrated 10 years. Miku Expo celebrated 10 years. Like, they should be able to do well. They should have been able to make a good LED screen performance. I know they can. And it makes me sad to see them fumble. And yeah, in the future, I'm gonna seriously consider whether or not it's better just to save my money and play the lotto and <laughs> maybe go to Magical Midai. I don't know, I've been I was lucky seven years in a row and one of them I had to re-enter. <laughs> I had to win twice to go to 2020. Like, I'd rather spend thousands of dollars to go to Magical Mirai than, you know, maybe in the short term save money, but have to deal with a poorly organized show like Miku Expo 2024 again. And I want to believe that they can improve. I want to believe that, I guess Miku Expo 2026 will be better. But I'm gonna be cautious, and I think most of the fans will be too. And I think that's really sad. And if the Miku Expo team is for some reason watching this, I want you to, I want to see you do better. I want to see you do better. And I hope you can prove that next time. And with that, that's all I got for you. That was my ramble as a seven-time goer to me Magical Midai. Um, I've been to a variety of events in Japan. I previously lived in Japan, and that's how I got to go to so many. They weren't uh, <laughs> flights out to Japan every year. Um, but um, if you like, I don't know, rambling about Miku, being cool with Miku, playing video games that maybe don't have to do with Miku, I mostly stream on Twitch uh, pretty much every day of the week, either starting at 6 p.m. or 7 p.m. EST. Um, I play a variety of games, but mostly Final Fantasy XIV. I like rhythm games. I like roguelikes. I like... Miku. <laughs> so I play a lot of different games if you'd like to come and hang out. I also stream on YouTube, mostly on Thursday, Friday, and Mondays. Uh, and you can obviously check out the wait rooms here. But otherwise, I post uh, stream shorts pretty much every day, and animated shorts mostly related to Final Fantasy XIV every Wednesday. So I'd really appreciate it if you gave this video a like, and if you like that sort of content, you give me a subscribe. Otherwise, I hope you have a very fantastic Miku-filled day, perhaps. <laughs> and Oyasu Mimi, bye-bye!